This is Ashwin and do like, share and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Hello and welcome to yet another episode of Hello Dubai. Today, we have a guest in Hello Dubai. In the past 15 years, we have a guest in the past 15 years. We have a guest in Nokia. Kanum, Kanum, Nokia. Kanum, Kanum, Nokia. We have a guest in the past 15 years. We have a guest in the past 15 years. Andrik, welcome on the show, the fastest IPL bowler ever. Thank you so much for joining us. How are you doing? Yes, thank you for having me. No, it's been, it's been nice. Can't complain. Uh, nice being playing with you, so all good. <laughs> right. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Andrik. Andrik, a lot of people have a problem with your name. Okay, I'm sure you know it by now. It has got N-O-R-T-J-E. In India, we will definitely call it as not J. And how are we supposed to call you? It's Norkia, but Norcha, whatever you're using, that's fine. I don't, I don't mind. You can, you can just give us the exact pronunciation of it so that the people can follow it from now on. Norkia. Norkia. Give us the first name as well. Andres. Anarik Norkia is the name, right? That's perfect. Have I got it? Andrik, <laughs> just going to dive back a little bit, okay, in time. About 10 years ago, exactly in 2010, uh, when the Champions League was being held in South Africa, you told me that you are from PE and you, were, you came to watch the game at Port Elizabeth, right? Can you talk us through a little bit about it? Yeah, it was just fun seeing the IPL, obviously, um, or seeing the teams there. Uh, it was really fun to, to see everyone and like everyone you always see on TV. I think it was sort of my first interaction with, with um, big players, obviously. never There wasn't a lot of South Africans or international players from Port Elizabeth. So, that was pretty cool. And then, obviously... Uh, like I told you, bowling in the nets to the boys was that was quite cool. Bowling to Chennai, right? You you were bowling to Chennai, and but we've got a special guest today. Uh, P Dog is here. Okay, can you tell me why do you call him P Dog? His name is Prasanna. How did it become P Dog? <laughs> I've got no idea. <laughs> I've got no idea. That's just something when I got there. That was his nickname, so I don't know why it is. Maybe you can so, tell us. So for all the audience who are watching the show, Prasanna is known as P Dog in South Africa. I don't know. P dog. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. What do you think? I don't know. I don't know. Dog is in Africa. I don't know. My first name is Prasanna. P. I don't know. 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 I'll be very noisy in the dressing room. You know, I'll be always encouraging for every run and a wicket taken, even for a dot ball. So he felt, okay, fine. P and dog. P dog. That's how it originated. Andre, can you confirm that with you? Dog meets friend in Africa. Is that right? Uh, <laughs> well, if you, if you look at it from a very meta side angle, maybe. But uh, yeah, he's one of, one, of, one of the boys. I'd say that means one of the boys. Yeah. Okay, fine. We'll give it to him. All right. We, I, I, I want to talk a little bit about Port Elizabeth, where you come from. It's the Eastern Cape in South Africa, right, uh, Andre? Uh, yes. Generally, we've had fast bowlers in the past have you know, uh, like nicknames. We had Alan Donald with a name called White Lightning. Then we had Shoya Bakhtar with a name called Rawal Pindi Express. But the fastest thing in Port Elizabeth is the breeze, right? Do you want to name yourself after the breeze in PE? <laughs> no. No. Uh, lots of wind there, but no, I don't want to go according to the breeze, no. Okay. Can you tell us a little bit about your childhood as you grew up in PE, uh, Andre? How did you start? How did you take up to the game? What attracted you towards the game? Uh, cricket was... So I'm a, I'm the last one. So my brother is 13 years older. My six, sister is 16 years older. So played a bit of cricket with my brother uh, in the backyard. That's the first, sort of first memory I can remember of cricket. Um, and then growing up, started playing indoor cricket a little bit. And my one of my best friends, he lived just sort of behind us. So always went there. Always played like backyard cricket in the front yard. Um, and yeah, <laughs> yeah, we just just always always played played a lot of cricket and um, obviously winter we played a bit of rugby but then from there on it was just always indoor cricket or outdoor cricket and started playing sort of provincial from under 18 I would say and then yeah slowly folded it up until until now. All right uh, let's ask P-Dog a little bit because he's been raving about the fact that he expects you to bowl 160 kilometers you bowl 156.1 and he said the day you bowl 160 he will do 100 push-ups. So, I want to know a little bit about it. Uh, Prasanna, can you tell us something about uh, what it is all about? Why do you want him to bowl 160 against the Indian team that too? <laughs> I want to open up on something. I want to take you back to 2018. 
So when our team was there for a test match, the net session, there was one tall young boy coming there and really bloody rushing well, the Tall, young and smart looking boy? Yeah, smart looking, of course. Yeah. We call him as a lady killer in South Africa. Oh, so, wow. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's how smart he looks. So I was seriously that time working on Ashim Amla's trigger moment in the screen, giving him some problems. And this guy at the same time was rushing him like anything, heating in his ribs and all these things. And then the night Ashim came to my room and then to have a cup of tea. And then I knew who was Andrik Norke, but I've never seen him. And then I asked him, I was watching the video, I said, who the hell is this guy? And he said, you don't know him. This is Andrik Norke. I said, I mean, what is this Andrik Norke? And then I took the phone call right in front of him, the chairman of selectors, our Linda Zondi, and said, Zinda, look, this is the man who's going to break the 100 miles per hour barrier set by Shwaya Bhaktar. He just asked me one question. Pirog, are you okay? Are you feeling sleepy? <laughs> Please take me seriously. This is the boy who's going to clock 100 miles per hour. So when I saw him that, and then he made his debut on 2nd of March 2019 in a pacey, wondrous wicket against Sri Lanka, where he bowled seven overs for one for 33. In his first week, it is Lasit Malinga. I'm sure that you will remember that. Out of that 42 deliveries he bowled, 26 was above 145 kilometers per hour, for which I also called him for the fines meeting to have a drink after we won the match. That is the day I thought, look, this is going to be the superstar in the making. For me, you have been talking about the nickname about him. The name, what I've given him is the Scud. It's the what? Scud, S-C-U-D, the Scud. What, is, what does the Scud mean, Andre? Does it mean anything? <laughs> right, what okay. does it mean, Pino? Why do you must ask Pino? What does it mean? What does it mean, uh, Prasanna? Scud is like a bullet. It's another form of Scud. Bullet oh. is another form. Okay. Call. Why don't we name you as the P.E. Bullet? The bullet from Port Elizabeth. That that sounds like a decent name. The bullet. That's your nickname. We will try and popularize that. Andre, uh, he talked about the first memory of watching you bowl to Hashim Amla and hitting him on the rib cage, making it nasty for the great batsman. Uh, but can you tell us what is your first memory of P Dog? When did you see him? Yeah, <laughs> first time I saw him, I was I was probably at the nets, but. Um, I think I, I remember him at the net, but that's about it. I, I, I didn't know he was the video analysis. I don't know what he's, what he's doing. So uh, I think the first proper memory I've got about him is, is sort of in the change room when I, when I joined up with the team or at the first practice. And then we slowly but surely started working together. So I, I'd say the first practice is the best memory I've got. Okay, right. The first practice is the best memory he's got of P Dog. And uh, we are trying to get a video sorted, Andrik, so that you can watch that video of him celebrating one of your wickets. So, I think you saw that video, right, of his celebration. What sort of a person is P-Dog? I mean, everybody thinks he's very funny, thinks he's very slapstick. But what is he in the dressing room in South Africa? What is he like? Uh, he's, he's good fun. He's good energy. Uh, he brings a lot of energy to the boys. Um, and like you said, he's, he's always clapping. He's always making a noise, even if it's a dot <laughs> ball. So, um, I think, but he's also got a couple of comments that he's made that, that all of us doubt. Uh, he said he'll take a couple of boys in a 100-meter sprint, which which I'd still love to see. I'm still waiting for that day. Unfortunately, COVID happened, but I'm still waiting for that day. But in general, it's unbelievable working with him. So much good and positive energy. Right. You, you've given us a lot of dope on Prasanna, so we can take make use of it sometime later. But now a little bit more dwelling deeper about yourself, Andre. So uh, this is your first proper stint with an IPL team. You were with KKR last year, but you couldn't play. Uh, how's the stint been? How are you enjoying the Delhi Capitals? How are you enjoying playing playing alongside me? It's been good fun. I've really enjoyed. I've really enjoyed the team. I've really enjoyed the environment. Um, so much fun. It's it's very relaxing. But also when we get to to the working times, it it gets like the energies are good and and everyone is focused. Um, it's just nice having. I mean, it's there's a couple of big names, but like I said, it's no. It's like everyone is sort of. Everyone just expects everyone to just do their job. Um, and I think that's the most important thing. And that's really nice where generally you find a team where one or two or one or two guys, you, you're not sure what to expect. But I think in this team, it's just you, you know what you're going to get and, and everyone's going to sort of chip in on their day. So it's been really so, so much fun. Um, and yeah, it's also besides now for you and the older boys, it's, uh, it's quite a young team. Uh, <laughs> Got a young team, which is nice. You just as well. it, I think it, 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 it nice to you. 
all right, it's okay. We'll take it on the chin. <laughs> yeah, no, I just think it's a good young team and lots of good energies and um, good banter as well on the side. Right, okay. I'm going to ask a couple of uh, I'm tricky questions towards the end as we come to the finish. But now for uh, bowling alongside Kagiso Rabada, the purple cap holder, uh, he's got a purple cap perennially on his head. Do you have any other color caps in your group? <laughs> Are you going to challenge him at some stage at all? <laughs> at this stage, I'm just wearing my black cap. I don't know what that means, but I'm just keeping it. I uh, know he's been fighting really well. Um, well done to him so far. And he's, I'm sure he's just going to keep up his performances. He's really been doing well and sort of helped me through certain times or certain stages, just understanding certain things. But um, he's been doing really well. Right, okay. And uh, Andre, uh, just, uh, just to dive a little more deeper into your IPL stint with the Delhi Capitals. Uh, what did you expect when you landed here? You're going to be uh, captain by Shreyas. You're going to be coached by Ricky Ponty. Uh, what have you got from them? Did you expect something? Has the expectations been met yet? Or have you learned anything new? No, it's definitely been met. It's, um, I think coming here, I didn't really know what to expect. For me, it was more about just experiencing everything and, and, and seeing how different cricketing environments come together. And for me, I've always just played in South Africa or for South Africa, so I haven't played in this my first sort of league or, or stint outside of South Africa. So it's nice to see that all the different um, sort of cricket cultures come together, and it's yeah, um, how they've gone about their things. It's 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 nice to see. It's also given me sort of a some confidence that a lot of it is the same as back home. Obviously, cricket still says cricket top of off is top of off, but um, just how you go about things has been nice to see and. Yeah, the different ways of going about it. Top of off is still top of off, but hitting them at 156 and 140 is completely different. I hope you know that and empathize with the batters at some stage. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to put you a bit of a spot. You said COVID happened, right? Uh, in India, COVID has happened. Around the world, COVID has happened. It's been quite tough times for everybody. Uh, but you told me something very interesting in South Africa, right? In India, if people want to get tested, right? If they want to do a COVID test, we all stand in long queues and get tested. But back home in the Eastern Cape, you do it in the cars, right? Can you tell us something about it? Yeah, so it's... I don't know. I thought that's all over the world how it is. <laughs> Obviously not. It makes a lot more sense. But it's uh, it's like a McDonald's drive through It's just you you give your nose to them and you don't get food. So, um, yeah, we just sit in the car and you wait until you get to... I'm not sure if it's like that at all the testing venues, but the ones that I've gone to is you sit in your car and until you get to the front, open up your window, get tested and you leave again. I don't know about the rest of South Africa, but if I think Eastern Cape is the only place where they do this, sit in the car and do COVID tests, I think it has to be the most smartest place on earth because they talk about social distancing. If you sit in a car, it's already seven feet. So that's great, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. I mean, no, there's no better way of doing it. There's no better way of doing it. Right. Okay. Uh, Andrik, I hope you know that you're putting smiles on a lot of people's faces in these tough times. But I want to put, your, put a smile on your face by asking P-Dog a very interesting question about you now. Uh, P-Dog, can you tell us something about Andrik that is so unlike a South African, that is very unlike South Africans? Uh, yeah, I think it's both uh, flipper and googly together what you're bold to me. But you know what? Life is, uh, as uh, now being part of the South African team, it's all about being resilient to find a way. So, if you ask about Andrik, it's very simple. When you, when you see the way he is talking here now, the way, how polite is he in the dressing room, the way he talks to people is very quiet. Not many times even people even hear what he's saying. That's how, how exactly he's very humble. Now, when he gets onto the field of play, you are going to see an absolute monster in. And you can see the way he loves that. You have to probably see it from the front view. Like that. I'm sure that he understands that. And every time... He's the only guy I can tell you, even the plans go one and a half inch the other way around. The 12th man will be coming there. soon. Andrik wants to know he's doing the right thing to Stephen Smith. Andrik wants to know whether the angle, the bounces directed to Stephen Smith is correct. All of a sudden, you see a split personality in Andrik when he's in. That is a kind of a passion he possesses for the game. That's how he puts me under pressure, to be very honest with you. At the end of the day, everything goes on well. But all I can say is, Andrik has been loud, not only by me, but everyone. Andrik, we've had a chat about this, right? I put that question to him to say something very interesting, but he's diverted the topic to cricket. Okay? I think it is interesting. <laughs> because the most interesting thing that I found about Andrik, and unlike a lot of other South Africans I've interacted with, he's, he's that such a big simpleton. 
he doesn't understand anything about brands and he's not even interested about it we were having a conversation the other day and he said i do not know brands i'm just like another boy next door andre can you tell us some tell us something more about that how much of a simpleton are you you're so different to a lot of other south africans have met so as pedro would say it's very simple um it's uh no for me it's just uh, it's just how i grew up um and anything i do as well cricket as well um like i said earlier the best ball is top of off and try and keep things basic if you look at the action try and keep it basic if you look at what i'm wearing keep it basic um i think everything for me is sometimes might be too basic sometimes um maybe could put in a little bit more but in general try and keep it basic and then um i think the only thing i do that's not basic is when i go to pedo again and listen to all the information but otherwise um i try to keep things as simple as possible and I mean, there's not more a lot more I need, to narrate, I need to narrate the story we were sitting after the game and having a you know a get together after the game and uh, there were quite a few boys in the table and they were talking about louis vuittons burberrys and all sort of what not on brands and all that and quickly andre was holding a drink he just got he just got up and he said this is not a table i need to be a part of because i know nothing about it <laughs> and i was like andre you cannot be so simple you need to at, at some stage try and learn about all the things <laughs> because this is what boys do talk at the IPL Andre uh, you're such a gentleman and if i may take one more step and say you're one of the nicest cricketers i have played with uh, it will be an understatement for you but andre uh, one final thing do you think you'll be able to hit 160 km per hour in this ipl uh no, thanks ash um yo it's i don't know it's about on the day um it's not something like i didn't know until after the game it was 156 um obviously nothing on the scoreboard or anything it would have been a little bit of help and then get the blood flowing but um i've got no idea um hopefully i can hopefully it's something that i've got in me and it's definitely something i've wanted to do and this what pedro was talking about um like the 100 push ups thing has been it's not now recently it's been coming for a while um at the stage i didn't believe him but now obviously being so close and having done all the hard work in during lockdown hopefully it's something we can do hopefully hopefully it's something that maybe a, a a good wicket or some adrenaline or i don't know the right combination and we can do it maybe maybe this ipl or maybe in the future there there are lots of youngsters out there watching wanting to bowl as quick as breeze like how you do or like a bullet like uh, pirog said uh, any any piece of advice for them if they need to bowl quick what do you do what are the checklists that you tick uh it's it's going to get too te- too technical but i think uh, the the two important things that changed it for me and it's going to be basic playing. keep it basic yeah the two important things for me that that changed it was um obviously you have to be strong and you have to understand what you're doing in the gym and not look not go for a beach body but the right things um while you're jumping but um i think the two basic thing for me that that helped me and it's easy easy ish to control is brace front leg and a strong front arm so um those were the two things that and that are still focus on but um Yeah, as soon as you've got the leg you can play around with the arm, the front leg and then you can play around with the front arm and and see how different are uh, yeah. Are you are you use it differently if I can say that maybe pulling it in quicker or harder or whatever but yeah. Those are two most important things. Pro tips are always uh, definitely valuable and uh, Andrik uh, before I let you go uh, can you tell us who's the greatest South African cricketer that you've ever seen? Definitely Dale Stein. Dale Stein. Um, yeah, yeah. Since um, growing up, obviously, he was sort of in. It was sort of in the era where I was watching cricket, and again, I can't, I can't comment about those before him. But um, I think he's definitely one of the best. Um, obviously, watching that fire and that energy, and just the skill as well, and the consistency that he brought to the game was something unbelievable. And still, till today, is today's my era. uh now for the final question on dig a little bit of a tricky question you can take some time and decide if you want the greatest analyst that you worked with oh i've only worked with two so the pedog is definitely I've, i've enjoyed working with him um i think he's got so much knowledge uh that sometimes he's he's saying one thing and his brain is going to another thing as well and he's just he's got so much um so much knowledge so much understanding of the game I'm, i've never seen someone wake up at 2 a.m to watch cpl wake up at 3 a.m to watch women, uh, another women's team play not even a south african women's team uh 
like during a test series, he'll do that. During anything, he'll do that. So uh, definitely so much knowledge and um, understanding for the game. That's one thing I can say. Prasanna? Buy a donkey. Buy a donkey. Buy a donkey, yeah. Okay, Come on. I don't want to buy a donkey. But tell me, Andre, how do I say thank you in Afrikaans? Buy a no, donkey. That's, that's what I'm telling you. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Sorry. Buy, buy, it's not buy a donkey, right? It's buy a donkey. Yes. Not correct, buying yeah. a donkey. Buy a donkey. <laughs> donkey. Come on. Buy no, a donkey. Buy a donkey. Yes, please. Don't say buy a donkey. Don't, don't separate it. Tell it together. Buy a donkey. Okay, buy a donkey. <laughs> right. Prasanna, uh, before we let Andre go and you go, can you tell us uh, one, one parting thing that a wish that you want Andre to fulfill? Because a lot of people on Twitter are going after your thoughts and after your opinions. So we'd like to know what you think of Andre's performance in the IPL so far. Just analyze look, it. Is, look, it is, it is very much expected, to be very honest with you. It's not a surprise for someone like me because... We unfortunately missed his services in the World Cup last year. Probably if it would have been a part of a World Cup team, I'm sure that results wouldn't have been what people might have witnessed. I, I, I can definitely say that. So, someone like Andrik was speaking about, you know, bowling fast. I could rather say the reason why is he achieving it is because of the uncomplicated action. The rhythmic runner party has got the beautiful loading and the beautiful delivery strategy, which is not really more when you generate pace. So, the uncomplicated action, where you know that you're not going to get injured, that is really going to get you a confidence to really put an extra mile to get in. For me, it is very simple. I don't know whether he remembers that he was sitting in the flight while he's taking it from Dubai. Sorry, join us back to Dubai. Send him a message. Anna, I want you to break the 100 miles per hour barrier. And he very humbly replied me, bye, I will try. That is, that is the humbleness you can see of a player. But I Thankfully, he froze. <laughs> Uh, in this IPL, I'm putting my money on it. Look, look Amrik, uh, I'm, I'm so bloody excited for the fact, not because you will bowl 160. Uh, that is about another day. You might bowl, you might not bowl, but I wish you really bowl. But the entire Twitter RT and the people out there are expecting him to do 100 push-ups. And we want to see that video. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I want to see that. Look, look, sorry. Uh, sorry for interrupting. For me, it is very simple. I live life from here. That is, so that if is there is a hard. challenge, if there is a challenge, there is only one way around. I'm going to give a big tilt until I get in there. These days I'm doing 70 push-ups. The moment I saw Andre clocking 156, I thought, look, I need to get ready. The day you see 100 miles per hour ball clock, that is going to be in the IPL. Next 15 seconds, you're going to see a 100 push-ups video. The tribute for my man, Andre Knocke. You can take it from me. Right, we are all looking forward to it, Andrik. More than your 100 miles per hour, this 100 push-ups are something that we are all looking forward to. Uh, thank you so much for joining us on Hello Dubai, Andrik. People are going to definitely enjoy this. Thank you so much for joining us again. Ipo Patingana. Ipo Patingana. I need to see the word. The last one is a bit of a challenge. Okay. Konjam Patu Udunga Gopal. Yo. Uh, uh, nai, nai, nai. <laughs> so you, can, you can do it, just try it once. Okay, so Gopal is P Dog's nickname. So that's a name, right? Okay. When Gopal means it's okay, just just blow the trumpet a little lesser. That's what it means. We, we will break it. Konjam Pathu. Konjam Pathu. Konjam Pathu. Konjam Pathu. Correct. Udunga Gopal. Udunga Gopal. Gopal is a name. Udunga Gopal. Udunga Gopal. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, it's too much oh together. my goodness. <laughs> and I you nailed it. I nailed it, I'm telling you. This is Ashwin and do like, share and subscribe to my YouTube channel.